All right, so now I hear myself. Let me fix this. Okay, so now we're going to go to our participants. Let me start letting everybody in here. This meeting is being recorded. So everyone's getting flagged for the recording. Good. You're muted. I'm not quite. I'm muted. No, I don't know. Are you muted? No. Shouldn't be muted. One. Just getting everybody in here. Sorry. Give me one second here. Two. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Oh, got to, somebody's got to turn off their uh, co-host. <laughs> I was very excited to see you, Kim. I'm very excited to see you too. <laughs> I'm here. Jessica, Rish, George, Heidi. Hello, everyone. Hey, George, what's happening? Just trying to get back into the swing of things. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, just wait a few minutes. There's actually quite a bit. Of, I think there was over 30 people sign up for today's session. So I'll just give it a couple of minutes. And we're going to jump into it. And I'm going to remember to record this time, right? I'm not going to stop this recording. I'm going to let it record. I'm just letting people in on the other side. Please, yeah. Good. Rania is here. Yay. Yeah. Hi, Rania. She got my link or your link. She probably got both of our, our both links. Both of our links. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And I saw. Some more people. Yes, Rania. I can see Rania now. How are you? <laughs> You're muted, but that's okay. I can read. I can read your lips. It's good. <laughs> uh, all right, perfect. So what we'll do is we'll uh, another thirty seconds. We'll get going. Then people join in as they come. So they're all coming in here. Mark Gill, I think I saw him on a post. <clears throat> Excellent. Hey, Mark, welcome. Heidi, how's it going? Everything good? Could you, I don't hear you. You can just, you can unmute. Anybody can unmute. She has a thumbs up. I, I, I changed the, uh, so we did this last week and I had it in the webinar format and I just couldn't see everybody. And it was, it was, it was, it, it was, wasn't fun for him. It was like, I was talking to myself, right? It was, it was, it was fun. So I want you guys to just interrupt and harass me or do whatever you need to do. And cause I think this is really, really important. I have some people from my team here learning um, more about leveraging um, the down payment assistance shared equity program. So um you guys have seen some of this before but again um i want this to be interact just unmute or do whatever you need to do as we go through it and if there's something i know i'm going to answer as we go along um no problem i'll just say hey this i'm going to get to that and we'll get to it and then make you question answer any questions you have okay so let me just do a share screen here and we are ready to roll I think are you letting people in? Okay. And you can monitor the um, chat and make sure everything's good. Everybody sees my screen okay? And let yep, me, yeah, screen. okay. Yep, good. Good. Yeah. Yay. Okay, let me go to this one here. Um, okay, so welcome everyone. So I know that um, I've We've been definitely reaching out to um, a lot of different brokerages and, and whatnot in terms of um, trying to get build up awareness on, under programs that are now available that a lot of people don't even know exist. 
Um, so I'm going to kind of cover what this is. And I really believe that programs like this that you can actually leverage to actually um, weed out some buyers or get some buyers more in, into the market that you may be connected to in different ways. So I'm going to approach this in a different way um, from a realtor's perspective in, in creating leads. Okay. So um, and I kind of explain what, what we're going to do. So we are going to talk about some of the buyer challenges. We're going to talk about uh, the shared equity financing, how it works, um, when buyers should be using this program, how to explain it to buyers, but then, and I think more importantly, how to leverage this um, for leads. Okay. So just a little bit of background. If you don't know me, my name is Lauren Andrews. I'm the principal broker of Expert Financial for Dominion Lending. Um, uh, helping me here is Anika. You can wave Anika. Okay, perfect. Um, and I have a bunch of people on my team here as well um, that are ambassadors for this particular program that are able to help in many different ways. Okay. A um, little bit about my background. I used to teach for Aria College. I was a broker of record for a real estate company. I know the world that you're... That that you're living in we particularly our brokerage is more of a unique brokerage in that we definitely focus on realtors in building production okay that's really what we do and that's why with when i when i look at these different things you're gonna you're gonna um I, we're just doing approaches in a different way if that for example if you were at an arbor presentation to learn about the program you learn about the program but you don't really learn how to apply it so that's really what we're going to be talking about here um in this let me see if i have a way to um we have polls let me see how i can access these polls do you know how to access the polls oh there it is polls um Okay, so first of all, I just want to kind of just figure out how long you guys have been in the business. So let me just throw this out there. If you just kind of take um, a glance and for those of you, um, yeah, just just take two seconds, put it in. I just want to get an idea, of, you know, connecting with people that have been in the business for a long time or a relatively short time. And you're doing the admissions, right? Yes, I am. Sorry. Perfect. Okay. Oh, there's some people waiting. Okay, I'll leave it up for another three seconds. There's nobody here less than two years, right? I know some of my 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 people aren't answering it because I know they're <laughs> some of your less than two years, but okay, this is great. Okay, perfect. Uh, so let me just end this poll. I'll share the results. So just to get an idea of the percentages that are in here right now so far that have joined, um, we have the majority of people over 10 years. Okay, so no, no, no. So two to five years, 57%, 29%, uh, 10 years, um, which is phenomenal. Okay, um, so that's great. And then let me, let me go back here and I'm just going to ask one more question before we get into here and for those for my team don't answer this one i just need to know for um anybody else that's out there how knowledgeable you are into shared equity do you know anything about it do you know a lot about it um you just you know fairly knowledgeable if you can just put some information in here that would be perfect okay so right now, all right. So most people are brand new, I'm thinking. Okay. All right. Gives me an idea. Okay, perfect. All right. So I'll just, uh, sorry, that's those are the results. So most of the people are just brand new or they know a little bit about it. Okay. Or they might've seen one of my posts and say, what the heck is this guy talking about? He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> um, perfect. All right. So as I talk about this, so if you've never heard of Arbro, so I will tell you, I'm one of the most skeptical people in the world. And I, I soon for my, it was my assistant that brought this program up to me and I said, I think you should look into this. I'm like, okay, here's another program. And I'm looking into it, looking into it. I say, wait a minute. Um, there's gotta be something here. And then I dive into it and I dissected it and everything else because you know, we are, you know, we're in the top 20, you know, brokerages in Canada for, for Dominion Lending and Dominion Lending is one of the biggest brokerages in, in, um, in Canada. Right. So, and for us, it's really, really important that we, um, any programs that we're bringing to our clients, to our referral partners, everything else is tied, you know, 
tried, tested, and true, right? So we want to make sure that it it's um, it works. So then the next thing I realized is that uh, once you even learned about the program, it's like, oh, this is a cool program. And and when I was telling you know some of my you know our our uh, realtor partners and everything else that we work with is, hey, this is a great program. This is how it works. And they think, okay, let me think if I know anybody that needs it, right? And then that's where they would stop, okay? Um, and uh, I just, again, sent out a reminder to a bunch of people. And somebody says, okay, I might have somebody that this could qualify for. And so I need you to think differently about it, right? I need you to kind of have a different mindset about it because what I'm going to what I'm gonna do is I'm going to explain how the program is, how it works, when you would use it. But I really want you to think of the messaging that I'm going to be putting in here, the scripting and some strategies to get people to ask you questions about it. OK, um, and I'm saying this because I, I did a I changed the whole thing and how I did this. And I did a presentation. It was Remax had me had me come in, talk to, you know, about 20 or 30 of their realtors. And within uh, within 30 days, they already sent 20 buyer referrals off to us. Um by just the approach. Now, understand that everybody that inquires you about this particular program, you know, every, you know, five inquiries, one might fit this program, but usually we find other solutions that other outside of this program that's more suitable for them, right? But the fact is, but the program and everything else is, has um, made them think, man, maybe I can get into a home a lot sooner. Maybe I don't have to wait for two or three years to do this. So that's the way I want you to think about when we're, when we're approaching, you know, all these things and say, okay, let me understand how the program works. Let me understand how I can actually, um, communicate it to people from my database, uh, people that I'm coming in contact with to get people to ask me about it. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to make is the realtor partner is the main source of people going for information. We need you to be, we need your clients to be the hero, but you need to be the Yoda of the story, okay? Um, the one that's going to help them get to the destination. And what we do is just an extension of, of what you can bring to the people that you're connecting to on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So um, so that's why I want you to think about this as we go through. I want you to think of it different. I want you to think about a one-to-one -one relationship. I got this client that would fit there and that's it, okay? There's a lot more that, that you can get out of this. Um, so is now a good time to buy? Um well, you know what? It's a. Uh, I think that you know when a client asks me, "Is now a good time to buy?" I always say, you know, the best time to buy is when you're ready to buy. Okay, um, when you try and time markets and everything else, it gets very difficult. Now, uh, a lot of the economists are saying we're kind of reached the plateau of where our uh, rates are going, and with if all goes as according to what they say it will, um, they're anticipating rates to start coming down. Um, by you know end of next quarter uh first quarter of next year i mean um you know towards maybe second quarter of next year um and what would what would that mean because right now you know you see the videos and the stats that come out that it's more of a buyer's market right now because there is a a, a good amount of inventory out there um prices have come down on our side we see a lot of the appraisals coming in lesser values and things like that than um than what is anticipated. Um, and there's a lot of new builds that are suffering from this as well. But at the end of the day um, is now a good time to buy. So from a buyer's perspective, it's, um, you know, we have to, I think right now it's communicating to the buyers that now is a very good time to buy because of where the market is for them. You know, at the end of the day, you marry the property, but you only date the rate, okay? And if we know rates are coming down, wouldn't you prefer to be buying that property at maybe a lower price point than if the rates start to go down, the inventory gets eaten up, and then you start to get the, the multiple offers, starts pushing prices up again, and then your mortgage rate, your mortgage payments are going to be exactly the same because now you're paying X amount more for that home. So yeah, I would say now for me, I believe is a great time to buy, but if you're ready to buy, okay? And that's what it is. It's just trying to make, you know, position, you know, our clients so we can get them into homes so they're ready, okay? So if I look at right now, if I am a buyer, okay, and I don't have a 20% down payment, this is basically how much I can afford right now because now we have whatever the rates are right now, we have to use a stress test 
which is 2% above whatever that rate is. And you know, you know, you have a couple that are making a hundred thousand dollars, their maximum purchase price is 360,000. Okay. And you know, up to if you have a combined income of 200,000, now your maximum purchase price is about 820,000. Okay. So what's happening right now, what I'm seeing is there's people that are saying, you know what? I'm going to hold off because I can't get into the market. So if you don't have access to, you know, the bank of mom and dad and everything else to help you with a down payment um, and you got to come up with your entire down payment and you don't have a full 20%, now you're limited to where your price points are. So some people are priced out of the market for what they need right now. And they say, okay, I got to wait and save some more money to get into the market. So they end up waiting. Okay. And what happens when we wait? What happens with pricing and everything else? Well, we're going to show you a little later on. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about shared equity financing. So shared equity financing is so Arboros, but there's two, there's two companies that actually do this. Um, and I'm going to talk about Arboro, which is which is the main one that, that we've been dealing with for over a year. Okay. Um now the if you go to Arboro, they'll talk about it as co-ownership financing. Um but co-ownership financing, I think, is is confusing because it, it to me, it's like, Anika, I'm going to buy a home with you. You guys are going to live downstairs. We'll live upstairs. We'll share a bathroom and or we're both going to be on title. It's like you're buying it with other people. And I'm going to show you here. It's not like the, it's basically what they're doing is they're helping you with the down payment, but they're not on title. Like they're not there's not they're not connected to that property in that way. So sometimes the co-ownership puts a wrong, I think, is a different spin. And when I talked to the guys from Arbor, I said, listen, I like the idea of shared equity financing because it is more along the lines really describes what it is as opposed to, say, co-ownership purchasing. Right. Um, and that's where. And I've just tested this with, you know, the different clients or different, you know, groups, and it is a different perception of what it is. Okay. So a couple of things on this. Now, what I've done in throughout this entire um, presentation, I put a QR code where you can, you, you can scan it and just put in some information to get a information package and we can get some supplement stuff out to you as well. So feel free to scan that QR card at any time uh, throughout the presentation as you see them and uh, fill that in. Cause I used to always leave it to the end and then I would get these emails. I didn't, I missed the QR code or I missed the link and stuff like that. So I have it throughout the whole presentation. So feel free to scan it anytime. Okay, so shared equity financing. So what is this program? So basically what it is, is it bridges the gap to give you a full 20% down payment. Your clients, okay, will have to have at least one point with, sorry, at least to have a 5% down payment um, for any purchases up to uh, just under 1.7 million, okay? 5% down payment is the minimum. The minimum purchase price under this program is 550,000, okay? Um, can you buy more? Yeah. So you can actually use the program to buy up to 2.5 million. But once you get up past that 1.7 million, you will need about 10% down. Okay. Um, so what it does is it say whatever you're putting down, whether it be 5% or more, um, they will give you whatever else you need to give the 20% down payment. Almost like, just like, you know, gift money coming in from a family member to give that down payment so to speak all right but there's more of a connection to the gift which i'm going to explain in a second okay so let me let me break it down into some charts here so we kind of understand it and how an equity split is established from um from your down payments and again any questions you have along the way please ask the questions put them in the chat um raise your hands whatever it is we'll we're sure we'll entertain these questions as we go along okay so let's say for example i want to buy a million dollar property now minimum down payment for anything a million dollars or more is is 20 percent. there's there's no options on that okay um under under a million, we have options to put less than twenty percent down. But the max of what happens when I put less than twenty percent down is now it's an insured mortgage, so I got CMHC insurance on it, and the maximum amortization or the amount of time I pay off that mortgage is twenty five years. Okay, once we have a twenty percent down payment, now I get rid of CMHC and those insurance fees, and now I can extend to a thirty year amortization to qualify you for a mortgage at that amount. We just add the 20% down payment on top of it. Now that's your new purchase price. 
So how is that equity split? What is this equity split you're talking about, Lauren? Well, it's going to be based on whatever your down payment is. So if I buying a million dollar property and I put 5% down, which is 50,000, that's 25% of that down payment. That would mean my equity split translates to 25%, okay? So next slide, if I put 8%, which is 80,000, now that's 40% of that down payment. So my equity share is now 40%, okay? So whatever your down payment, your equity split is going to be determined by what the down payment portions are, okay? If I put 10% of the down payment, they put 10% down payment, it'd be 50-50, okay? Um, and that's how it is. And then later I'm going to explain what it means when when the property is sold. Um, but first of all, I just want to explain how an, what your equity split, how it's established when you're actually making that purchase, okay? So let's look at a couple of scenarios here. Um, now, this was done a little bit when rates were a little bit lower, okay? So the, for family number one, but it was a live scenario, so I wanted to include it. So this family wanted to buy their first condo, okay? They had a combined salary of 85000 and they had $40,000 saved, okay? Um, but they were a family of three, like they had a kid and, uh, and the couple, so they kind of needed that two-bedroom thing happening. Um, now... The maximum they would be able to qualify for is a $400,000 purchase on a high ratio mortgage, basically less than 20%. And now using this particular program, because they were also new to Canada, they didn't have access to gifts, money or anything coming in from, from other sources. Um, so using this program made sense. It helped them get to the type of uh, property they could get into and live into. And 570 it was now their new price point by having that full 20% down payment that was created through the shared equity financing, okay? Family number two, and you're gonna see a lot more of this, and this is actually um, uh, pretty frequent actually, okay? Um, there's a lot of times you'll have properties that are listed over a million dollars, and you'll have families that could afford the financing for properties over a million dollars, but they do not have the full 20% down payment, okay? And that has been a big challenge. So this one particular family, so picture this, they were um, had three kids. They were um, looking for a four bedroom home and it had to be in the GTA because of where the kids' schools were and everything else. Um, and But they couldn't find a four bedroom home that was under a million dollars, okay? Because they had $100,000 saved. So if they could find one that was under a million dollars, they could have bought a high ratio and that would have been great. But there's, they just weren't finding anything, okay? Now, they were also renting and paying $3,700 a month in rent for the house that they were in right now, okay? So they're spending $3,700 or $3, a month. Now let's say, and they have a hundred thousand dollars save, and let's say they could double that thirty-seven, and that extra thirty-seven hundred dollars a month went towards savings to try and accumulate a down payment of twenty percent, or at least two hundred thousand dollars down payment. It would have took them five years to do that, okay, to actually get there. So picture the choice: if your choice is to continue renting for the next five years, okay. And a, and a million dollar property, I'm going to show you on, the, on one of the next slides, a million dollar property, if, if the average appreciation is 7% per year, in five years from now, that property is now 1.4 million. So I've, I would lose $400,000 of equity, okay, by waiting five years and then getting into that home. Versus if I can get into the home now, um, what kind of difference would that make for me, okay? So in their particular situation, they were able to find a four bedroom home for 1,150,000, okay? So that was their situation. So that gives you an idea of, you know, some of the, the differences in terms of purchasing power um, that's happened with families. But so let me give you a scenario of what happens when I sell, okay? And what I'm gonna do is let me, let. so I'm gonna do the scenario where it was the 40% down, um, sorry, the $80,000 on the million dollar property, which is 40% equity, okay? Um, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna switch to this next slide because I think it's a little bit more um, easy to read, okay? So let's say, for example, now five years goes down the road and I'm selling this property for one and a half million dollars, okay? So let's say it, it increased by 500,000, okay? Now, 
what that means is, so I bought it for a million. I have $500,000 increase, right? So basically from that increase, I would get 280,000 of that because I would get 40% of what that is, okay? Now I've also, the mortgage is in my name. I've been making the principal payments towards the mortgage. Um, so I would also get all the principal, the equity that I've created from those mortgage payments on top of that. So my total that I would walk away from this home would be 380,000, okay? So five years ago, I had $80,000 in my pocket. I was paying rent and everything else. In five years, I was able to invest that 80,000 into a home, cash it out and turn my 80,000 into 380,000 that I was now able to go buy my next home, okay? If I had been trying to save, right? And trying to accumulate that over a period of five years and paying rent, I wouldn't be having 380,000 that I would have towards my next home. Okay. Um, and so in this particular scenario, so the, so an Arbo would get their original money they put in plus um, their 60% rate uh, at this, at that point, which would be the 420,000. So let's fast forward five years from now. Let's say I bought it for a million and I'm selling it for a million. What happens? Well, um, it's exactly the same. So the 80,000 I put in, I would get that back out, except me as the homeowner, I would still get all my principal payments I made towards the mortgage. So I'll walk away with 180,000 and Arbro would walk away with their original 120,000 that they put in, right? The equity that they put in. And let's go worst case scenario. Let's say, for example, something happens in the marketplace, market changes, and I end up selling that home for 800,000, $200,000 less than I put in just the equity value that we started off with. Well, what would happen then is we both lost our equity position because it went from a million to 800,000. But me as the homeowner, I would still get all the principal payments I made towards the mortgage, okay? And Arbor would walk away with zero. So they share the risk in the increase or decrease of that value of the home, but it can never go below what that original equity value is. Um, where I see some people taking advantage of some people buying higher end homes and, you know, some of those are losing value a little, a little bit um, at a greater rate than some of the regular price homes. Um, then you're also, you know, sharing that risk of a downturn with, uh, with Arboro. Okay. So the, the, my point here is, is that the equity share is only based on the increase decrease portion. It'll never go beyond what the original equity portion of that home is. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Any questions, please let me know. All right. Jump, jumping into here as well. Okay. So we're going to talk about closing costs too. So some of the things I need to also mention is when somebody comes to us and say, okay, you know, should I buy, if I buy at whatever price point it is, and one of the things that gets eliminated is obviously the CMHC or insurance or, or Genworth or, or Canada Guarantee or Sagan is now as uh, Genworth has changed to. Um, so no more. In, and that could be 25, 20,000 depends on what their down payment is, but it could be a considerable savings. So now there's no more um, no more insurance fee. The, also, what happens is your land transfer tax is also split relative to what that proportion of the equity is. So if I put 10% down, I would only be paying half of the land transfer tax, right? Because my, I would have a 50% equity share. Um, so there's a rebate. So there's a, there's a break on that too. And if the homeowner is a first time home buyer, um, that rebate would be applied to, okay my portion of the land transfer tax, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is important to note too, and you can remember when we were going through this before, because I talk about first-time home buyer rebates and people are thinking in my mind, oh, this is a first-time home buyer program. It's not, okay? It just has to be your principal residence, okay? I have people, I, I have somebody right now I'm working with that um, they live with their mom. They already bought a home, which is a rental, okay? But now- they don't want to live with their mom anymore, but they don't have the full like full down payment. So they're going to leverage this payment, th this program to get into their owner occupied home um, and still have a rental property, a rental property as well. OK, but you just can't use it to buy rental properties because that would be that would be amazing. But, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't do it like that. Um, so let me show you the differences here again. So I'm going to bring that chart up, that first chart that we looked at. OK, so. I looked at, you know, the first couple that were making $100,000 and they had less than 20%. 
their maximum purchase price was 360,000. Under this program or having a full 20%, uh, it's now 550,000, okay? So you can see as you go up for 130,000, it goes from 500 to 700, so an extra $200,000 more in terms of being able to get to a higher price point. Um, 160,000, you go from 610 to 870. And then if you're at a combined income of 200,000 with less than 20%, it was 820,000 with uh, Arbor or 20% program. Now you're at 1.1 million. Okay. So considerable difference in terms of affordability. Now, the other thing to look at here is your minimum down payment that's required. If let's say, for example, we look at the 200,000 where we had the uh, 820,000 of less than less than 20% down payment, your minimum down payment is 57,400. Whereas in, under this program, your minimum down payment is actually 55,000 because you only have to put down the minimum is 5% of whatever the purchase price is, okay? Now, we we obviously, we try and figure out ways we, if we can increase that down payment because we want to increase the equity portion. Um, sometimes we get gifts and things like that too. We can include to increase that equity portion. Um, but interestingly enough, sometimes you'll have clients that in, in these two situations, you know, the carrying cost of that home that's at 1.1 million might be less than the 820,000 purchase because maybe that 1.1 million has a self-contained basement or, a, you know, a place, you know, somewhere that there's a rental component also available in that particular home. Okay. So question I get all the time, you get it from your clients. Why would I give up the future equity in my home? Well, you don't want to, if you don't, if you, if you don't, if you can avoid it for sure. Right. We always look at any other options that, and in fact, there was somebody that came in for this particular program and we talked to them about, listen, do you have, you know, family overseas? Is there a way we can get money to come in from overseas? And we, there was. So now we're not going to use this program, right? But if your option is to sit and wait, okay, and buy a home, you know, again, years down the road, um, then that's not a good option, right? Because again, if I took $50,000 and put it into a GIC that earned 10% per year, okay, I would have $5,000 in one year. But if I took $50,000 and put it into a million dollars home that earned 10% per year, I just made $25,000 on my $50,000 in one year. I'm leveraging real estate and the total value of real estate for my money to grow, okay? And that is where, where the power of being able to get into a home and get into real estate. This is what we do for a living. We want people to own real estate because they will, you know, they'll build net worth by leveraging real estate at a much greater rate than most other investments out there, okay? So where does down payment come from? Okay, so we talk about different sources of down payment. So obviously your savings, TFSAs, gift from family members, your RSPs or your home buyer uh, accounts. Um, a lot of uh, down payments right now is also coming from um, seniors that are doing reverse mortgages to help their, their parents or, or help their kids or their grandparents are helping their, their grandkids, you know, things like that. So that's actually increased quite a bit too. Um, there's the government assistance down program. So that's basically if you put 5%, they'll put 5%. It's a shared equity financing program too. But the problem with that, the, pro the purchases have to be under a million dollars. Um, and there's a restriction on the Mac on the mortgage relative to how much the income is. So most of the times in the GTA, it doesn't really work because of where prices are. It'll work more in the outskirts of, of the GTA. Um, but that's also an option. And then, you know, if the government gives you 5% now, you just pay them 5% of whatever the sale price is when you sell it, right? So, so that is also an option. Um, and now you got whole life and some people have whole life insurance policies. They forget that's an asset that you can actually, you know, uh, gather, get cash from to actually invest in as for down payment of homes. Um, and of course, shared equity financing, which is, which is the, uh, which is, you know, this is the one we're talking about right now. So a couple of things that I want to kind of stress here. If there's any questions, it gives me a chance to break and breathe here. So <laughs> no questions. Sorry. All right. 
So a few things that I'm going to show you guys as, as I lead into, okay, how do you leverage this program and, and what do you do? Because it's just, I still want to explain some of the tools here. So Arboro has a website and for anybody that wants to offer this is, who's a realtor, you have to be registered with Arboro. Okay. And I'm going to explain how you register. It's simple. You register, you get access to the resources and that's basically it. It's not like a, it's not a course or a diploma, but you have to, there's some, caveats to how these presentation or how these offers are done, um, which aren't much different, but you need to be aware of them. Okay. So on, and I had this question yesterday, I was, I was talking to one of my our realtor partners and they were asking, you know, how do I explain it to the clients? Right. When it was, so what I did, I started showing them tools and I said, okay, let's look at it right now. So there's a tool that our has where you can say, um, you can put in the purchase price, right? So if I buy now without overall and I want to buy a million dollar home, I need $200,000 down. I'm going to have an $800,000 uh, mortgage. If if I buy now with Arboro, million dollar home, my minimum down payment is 50,000 and now I have an $800,000 mortgage. Or if I sit and wait, and let's say it's going to take me five years, like the same scenarios I was using before at a 7% appreciation, I can buy that same home I was looking at today for 1.4 million, I would need two hundred eighty thousand dollars down, and now I'd have I start off with a mortgage of one million one hundred and twenty-two thousand. Okay, that's a totally different picture, right? And because some people say, "Well, what type of equity am I going to give up?" Well, right now I know if I wait, I'm going to give up four hundred and two thousand dollars of equity, but I'm also going to be starting out with a lot higher mortgage, and I'm going to need a lot more of um, a down payment, and. And what do I have to sacrifice between now and five years from now if I have to double my savings, right? My cash flow, um, because if I'm paying rent, all that money is going towards rent versus if I got into a home today, I'd be, my money is going towards a mortgage, portion is going towards interest, which is like the equivalent of rent. But then now I also got a portion that's going towards my equity. Okay. So so that's one side of it. But then they have another calculator if you use these same figures to say, okay, what would I end up with if I put in, let's say I put in $100,000 with that family scenario, um, the same scenario, and I put seven years, five years. So I know that property is going to be worth one, uh, 1. 1.4, okay? Um, so now, um, yeah, let's say, and this one's adjusted because my previous example said you paid $100,000 off the mortgage. Now interest rates have gone up over five years. You're probably not going to be paying $100,000 off the mortgage because in interest rates are higher. So here we calculated $60,000. Okay. So of my net proceeds, and if I get 50% of that plus my mortgage, I would end up with $361,591 that I can now go cash out and go buy my next home. I've I've just raised my 20% down payment or you know, that I would have needed. Um, by leveraging it through owning real estate to get there, okay? Um, if that makes sense, all right? A couple more things on this. Um, with Arboro, okay, you have to understand, so there's there's no liens, there's uh, no loans, they're not on title, it's not registered as a second mortgage, you can sell it anytime, okay? Um, you do have options to pay them out early. If, if it's a home that you love, and you want to stay there, you can refinance to pay them out as well. But most of the time, you're going to use this as a stepping stone. And this is what I explained to my clients. This is a stepping stone for you to get to your next home. If you're able to get into a home now, use the real estate, leverage it to gain some equity, cash it out, now go buy your next home. This is really ideally what this program is designed for, is to help homeowners get into a home sooner, okay? And the way, the, the way, you know, pricing and everything is going, it's being very, very difficult because everybody's chasing it. So, so one of the questions I get, okay, if there's no loans, no liens, it's not a second mortgage, how do you know? There's a beneficiary agreement. I forget what the form number is that's, that's on the back end. It's almost like a hot water tank heater registration type thing that people would need to, it would need to be cleared out before you, when you sell that home. Okay, just like a just like the hot water tank heater would, right? That sort of thing. Okay. Um and that's that part. Now it's not available everywhere. Okay. So here are the locations, which is important because I get people say this, and I, I have people want to buy Niagara on the lake and other places. <laughs> 
not available there. So here, where's where it is available? It's very basically GTA. So Toronto, York, Durham, Peel, Halton, Dufferin, Simcoe. And if you're in Simcoe, it's like Barrie and those areas. Um, I just had a listing inquiry about Loretto. Um, yeah, and I, I check with I check with our partners at Arbor and they say yes, this qual they'll let me know because sometimes you get in those areas, you get some rural areas with farmlands and stuff like that. They don't like those ones, right? So um those areas but also hamilton london kitchener guelph and waterloo now okay so it's expanded too they will be doing an, an another expansion but they think it's going to be going east um but right now these are the areas that this these this program works okay so let's talk about and before I, i'm going to jump into how to leverage this program now now that i kind of gave it over any questions on arboro overall how it works nothing coming so far nothing you guys can unmute yourself. Yeah, unmute you yourself. Or, yeah. I have a question, and sorry, you may have already answered it, but is there a point where um, the buyer can buy out the, the other party so that they have 100% equity in it? Yeah, so that's basically, so so basically there's, they set it up so there's no restriction on selling. You can sell it anytime, okay? So if you sell two years from now, five years from now, 25 years from now, there's never there's never a restriction on selling. For refinancing, you can refinance and pay them out at any time, but they're going to expect a minimum rate of return of six percent. Okay, and that's they go through that when on the on the orientation when they're explaining all the parameters of it, because basically you can't really time the market and then you you know Uncle Nunzio wins a lottery, gives you money, you pay them out and whatever. So because it's a refinance, it's not a um, is it's not an urgent thing, right? So basically they'll do an appraisal at that time. And as long as it meets them, the, that criteria of a 6% rate of return on their side, then they say, yeah, no problem, whatever it is at that time. Okay, so you do have that option. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. I like questions, All right? So perfect. Um, okay, so I now I'm gonna talk about, okay, how, um, we've been testing this with our different partners and stuff like that and how they're actually leveraging certain conversations to get people to ask them about it. And that's really what it is. You want people to come up and start asking about, I don't understand. Part of what we do and for you to get, you know, really, really um, to cause attention is to get, is to kind of be disruptive in the marketplace. Um so, because I, I posted this on, a, I don't know if you saw on the forum yesterday, I was on, I love mortgage brokerage. Somebody, so I guess I, I was on um, real estate hacks. I was, I was doing a post there and somebody took it and put it over to, <laughs> um, to uh -huh. I love mortgage broker, which is another forum that we have. And they said, Hey, this mortgage guy said that you can buy a home up to 1.7 million with 20, with 5% down. Uh, using this no program and somebody responded he must have wrote his exam in crayons right yeah. and it was like and and the pro so the thing is is that i guarantee i know that 90 percent of you know mortgage agents probably wouldn't know the program exists i know probably higher percentage of a uh, realtors don't know it exists and that's why the benefit like congratulations for being here to learn more about it because at the end of the day um i'm going to tell you one of these open house strategies when uh the 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 realtor at the open house had, had used the script that we're going to give you um the person looked at them in anger and they said why didn't my realtor tell me about this and it was like wow this is fantastic so for you to know these programs and to in to give these options avail to make them available and make sure that you kind of have an awareness of them, I think is really important. So, so congratulations for being here to learn this. Okay. Um, so let's talk about open houses. So here's a big thing. So we're going to talk about sign writers. So this one's pretty cool. We got these sign writers made up and we just had them change to a little bit more um, specific for the home. Uh, do I have it on the next slide? I think I do. Okay. Something like this. Okay, perfect. So basically we got these sign writers made up and it says, you know, down payment assistance available for this home. Buy this home with 5% down. Okay. What's really cool is, um, so for example, last weekend, somebody was doing an open house. They put the sign writer on the bottom of their um, sign. And some. And then, now this was, uh, there's said 10% down. This was a $2.4 million listing. 
and a family on bicycles stopped for the open house. And the real estate sales are here to see the home. Say, listen, this isn't really our price range. But we saw this sign. How do you buy a home that's over a million dollars with less than 20%, right? And so the cool thing was, actually, it wasn't that cool because the real estate, oh, I'll give you the, um, you know, they give you my information or they passed me on to me. But I was like, wait a minute. No, this is your lead. You got to, this is where I got to stop and say, this is a lead. This is when clients come in and say, how do I buy something like this? They're obviously thinking about buying. And that's my point is we want to get people to ask you questions about how do I do this, right? Ask me how. So it's a call to action and it's a great, um, I guess, disruptor when people see this and they say, this doesn't make sense. This isn't something that I, that I really understand. Okay. And it's your opportunity to start having people ask these questions. Okay. Um, the other thing that we've been doing too, is we've been creating um, sort of co-branded uh, marketing materials. So basically we have all these sheets made up and we just basically, you know, create them up, we print them up and we get them off to you. If you're doing open houses, um, it's great to have um, this sort of material. We also put on the back that chart. I don't know if you see it in here. Have you seen me? Yeah, you can kind you see of it? Okay. You see what yeah, it's kind of small, but same chart that I have on here on affordability. So what happens is you have this at your open house, okay? And here's your script, okay? Um, when they're coming in, they're ready to sign in and their sheet saying, you just let them know, say, hey, there's a brand new program that helps people with a down payment. We'll give you a full 20%. Now you can buy up to 1.7 million, which is 5% down. If you know anybody that's looking to purchase that needs help with down payment, please take one of these flyers for them and don't hesitate to ask any questions. And you know, the very first open house that we launched this at, you know, out of the 10 people, which, you know, six of them are probably giving you their fake phone numbers to start off with, um, they took those flyers home and the realtor got two calls from the people that visited. Can you tell me more information about this program? And the thing was too, it wasn't exactly for those people too, but their sister or somebody else they knew were looking for a home or sort of gave up. So that's why that magic in the script, I'm not saying, hey, do you need help? I'm saying, who do you know, okay, that needs help with some down payment so they can get into the market sooner, okay? Because maybe we can use this program to help them with that, right? Um, same thing, similar script. You know, what about all your leasing clients that you've done leases for before? Why are they in leases? Well, maybe down payment was a challenge. What a great way to reach out and say, hey, just touching base, want to see how you're doing. Oh, and by the way, you know what? There's this new program that came out and same thing. You can now buy up to 1.7 million, 5% down. Do you know anybody is looking to purchase that would need help with down payment that you can introduce me to, right? Um, those scripts with the database, the past clients, and, and I did a client call. So after we do, um, we close a mortgage after 30 days or we check in regularly. But I do a, a client call after 30 days, to check out everything's going, make sure everything went out. And I, before I got off the Zoom call with them, I said, by the way, and I use the script, do you know anybody or who do you know? And they both looked at each other and they said the same name, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, hmm just by planting the seeds, because I'm thinking, wow, I don't need to, this might not even apply to any of my clients, but what I need to do is I need to plant seeds to people that I know with this particular awareness, this program exists to reach out because now I've just recruited my sales force, right? Because basically I am installing this idea that, you know what, maybe you don't need to wait three years, four years, five years, maybe it can be sooner. Maybe there's an opportunity, right? The other thing, if you, any of you are, um, you know, in Toronto, okay, it's, and you have condos. So I hear the condo market is very, very competitive right now. Um, and it doesn't have to be condos. It could be anything. Um, when, when you get into your MLS listings, obviously there's some restrictions with MLS. You got to make sure you're very careful with what you put into the listings. But what's happening now, people are now, because it's specific for the listing, you're not advertising, you can actually put the words down payment assistance available for this home. So if you got condo number one, condo number two, condo number three, and they're all the same and all of a sudden, oh, what's this? 
they may be calling you first. Okay, you want to ask information. Um, and again, it's your opportunity. If it's not your condo, they're going to buy. But now you have access to this program. Are they working with a realtor? How can you help them um, in other ways? Okay. The other th big thing that's happening right now is, you know, for your, for de being disruptive on your social media and your videos, um, our team has done a lot of videos with realtors because, so, for example, a realtor might not be that comfortable. So what we do is our team will give you the questions. Just ask these questions. I'll answer it. Mm -hmm. And then we will put all your contact information in there or it's in your social media. They'll reach out to you for more information. Okay. So those things are, uh, you know, those are some of the tools and resources that people are leveraging now to get information out there because again, it's disruptive. People don't know about the program and you're like the first out, right? Which makes sense. Now, a couple of things about this program. Any questions about this stuff? Hopefully it's been some good ideas so far, right? It's not bad. <laughs> um, I hope. Okay. Um, how to get access. So all all realtors must be registered. Okay. And the mortgage agent, like we've been, there's, there was only two brokerages for the longest time that were allowed to actually submit these. And it was us and, and another brokerage. Um it wasn't even Dominion Line. It was just our franchise and another brokerage. So, and it's expanding. So more agents, more mortgage agents are being authorized as well. Um, and we're helping uh, those mortgage agents as well. Okay. So you have to get access. And how do you get access? You go to arboro.com. So it's O-U-R-B-O-R-O. -O. Um, and we're going to send this out in that package if you scan for the information and stuff like that as well. Um, and you get registered. Basically, it's just registration. You get access to their resources. Because in the process, you need to know there is a process of um, how offers are done. So one of the things that happens is, okay, so you have a client that that this may qualify for. So usually what happens, you get them over into our, our world and we'll explain the program in details, make sure it makes sense. Then we'll kind of do a preliminary pre-approval to make sure that they fit the categories um, of the areas that they're looking at and income to qualify for the mortgage and make, make sure that works. Then once all that fits, we send them off to Arboro to do their screening. And then Arboro comes back to us and says, okay, you can go through and do a pre-approval for them, right? And then we do an official pre-approval uh, letter um, detailing uh, exactly how much they're they're approved for. Okay, so that's kind of the process, and it sounds like a long process, but it's not really that long. It's it could all happen within you know two or three days. Okay, so so it is pretty quick. A couple of things when you do an offer, though, um, one of the things they're going to ask for is a CMA, right? So much like you do for your clients, you're going to say, okay, we're going to be making an offer on this particular property. Here's the comparatives. And what's different now is, is the market's a little bit different now because I think a lot of the offers right now are, it's, it's a lot easier to put condition on financing and home inspection, things like that, because it's turned more into a buyer's market. But back in the day when it was multiple offers, it would be like, okay, we got these things we got to put into the offer. How are you going to put them in all these restrictions? Your offer is going to be, you know, they're going to say, no, I got this unconditional offer I'm going to take anyway. So what the CMA did at that particular time, Arbor would come back and say, okay, here's your comparative market analysis. Now here's a maximum bid price for that specific property. So you know exactly ahead of time where, where your threshold was. Um, now it's not as much of an issue if you're putting in the the, the finance condition, okay? Um, a couple other things they are going to want is a home inspection, okay? There has to be a home inspection uh, done on the property. They actually did provide a clause that... Um, when it was multiple offers, and again, putting in that home inspection was almost impossible. Um, they did put a clause saying you need to let us have access to the home inspection, but it will have no bearing and will no price adjustment or abatement for any reason um, for whatever the results of that home inspection was. Okay, so they did put that stuff in there, but right now it's a lot easier to do home inspections and everything else, um, and and appraisals and condition of financing um, and a minimum 40 days for closing. Okay. Um, that's the other thing. Uh, so just winding up. So your next steps is basically you need to um, please reach out. If you have any questions, you know, our contact information is here um, and I'm here ready to answer any questions that you guys have. Yep. 
There we go. There's the email. Any questions? No? Nothing so far. Nothing right. has come in. Okay. And nobody's unmuted themselves. Or unmute. Did I forget anything, guys, for my team? I would just say that I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that it's a lot of information to sort of take in. If it's the first time a lot of people are hearing it, it's, you're going to have questions. You just don't know what the questions are yet because you're yeah. still processing. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but it's, it's a great program. I have one of my clients doing it right now. Yeah, perfect. Um, you're muted. Oh, no, you're on my speaker. Yeah. My... One thing that I was going to mention, I know, um, Ronnie, we spoke about this yesterday, but if you guys do have questions after the fact, feel free to reach out to myself or Lauren. And I know if you guys want to book a one-on-one -on -one call, we can definitely do that. We also will have an information package um, that we're preparing that should be coming out in the next couple of days or early next week. Um, and we're working on getting a presentation or some form of PDF out to you guys. So you have that, have that as a reference point as well. And when you get into, once you register for Arbro, you will get access to their resources. They do have some resources in there too, including some information that, um, that you can get out to your clients. Um, and, uh, but I think we're going to try and integrate a little bit more into, you know, use some of their resources with, with your branding and things like that too. Yeah. Um, and if you guys need help getting registered, let us know. Um, that's something that I can definitely help you guys with as well. And then with the marketing material, like Lauren said, um, if there's something specific you guys are looking for, we can chat and see if it's something that we can help you guys with. When you are on their website, you will see their marketing material is very geared towards Arboro. Um, so as we mentioned, we can change the branding or just come up with something that's a little bit more customized. Yeah. At the, at the end of the day, we want you to guys to be the, you know, the main resources that are going to, you know, guide them. And like I said, it's about, you know, this program suits certain people in certain situations and might not be the right program for everybody. Um, but the fact that it exists and, you know, it was a big lesson for that one realtor when they, that first they were, the people were so angry that their realtor never mentioned it to them. Um, Right. And who knows, even if they did mention it to him, it might not be the right fit for them, but at least it's giving you guys tools to understand, hey, there are other options to help you get into a home. Right. And if you can, you know, just kind of, you know, embrace that and just spend some time to understand it will help you, you know, make sure that you're comfortable with everything and, and stuff that you don't know. You just say, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, have somebody from my finance division reach out to you and give you some more details. Right. So there's a lot of people that just know the basics. Um, you don't need to know everything, but you just need to know exists. You need to know the areas you need to be registered. And um, yeah, so it's, it's an opportunity for sure. Lauren. Yeah. For people that want the sign to add, or I forgot what you called it, to add to the bottom of their listing, um, how soon can we get that to them? I have them. I just ordered another batch. So they just came in today. So okay. yeah, we're ready. What we do is, yeah, just on that form, on those forms, on the um, QR codes, it, it you can request one of those signs, right? So we would get that out to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Hey guys, if there's no other questions, again, any other questions, reach out um, separately. It's not an issue. We're here to help. And um, that's it. Anything else you want to add? No, I'm just looking forward to working with you guys and seeing these uh, clients come in through the program, just getting more people into houses. Yeah, that's what it's about. All right, guys. Thank you so much. All right. Any questions, reach out and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren.